Louis Aldawi, and I'm a consultant hematologist at Rotherham Hospital in the UK. Today we'll talk about flow cytometry and we'll concentrate on the clinical applications of flow cytometry. What is flow cytometry? As the name implies, it's a technique for making rapid measurements on particles as they flow in fluid stream, usually in a single file. Cytometry metry stands for measurement and cyto for cell. So as we explained, it's a measurement of cells as they flow. Each cell is uniquely analyzed. It's not an average reading of a population of cells. In general, flow cytometry can make can do a differential of 10,000 cells in one second. If you want to do a manual differential of 100 cells, it will take you three to four minutes. So it's much quicker and much more accurate. With appropriate hardware and software, individual cells or populations can be selected and either analyzed further or sorted into a collecting vessel. So you can decide if you want to get monocytes, you want to get dendritic cells whatsoever, you can gate these cells and get them using a sorter. There are different flow cytometers from different manufacturers. And what type of cells can you use for flow cytometry? You can use blood cells, of course, you can use lungs, spleen, lymph node, solid tissue, solid tumors. If you want to use solid tissue, obviously you need to do disaggregation by different means. Applications of flow cytometry, we will concentrate today about the first two applications, cell size and cytoplasmic granularity, as well as cell surface antigen, sometimes referred to as phenotyping. This is a diagram explains how the flow cytometry works. You have a cell here in yellow. You switch on your flow cytometry and the cell comes towards the laser light gets hit by laser light and then the image gets interpreted by the computer. So you have the image on the forward scatter referred to as FSC, which is the first one from the bottom. If the cell is big, it will be high on FSC. If the cell is small, it will be low on FSC. Now the cell, if the cell is granular, the laser light will hit the granules and it will and more light will be detected by side scatter because of the deflection. With a cell, if is not granular, probably no light at all will be detected by side scatter. So how how that's how the flow cytometry will tell you uh, the size and cytoplasmic granularity. This is a diagram of the real flow cytometry, which has three main components: light source, detectors, and liquid flow. Uh, this is a diagram which shows you the forward scatter and side scatter. Big cells will be high in forward scatter, small cells will be low in forward scatter, granular cells will be high in side scatter, and non-granular cells will be low in side scatter. Now how about blood, normal blood cells? If we put them in flow cytometry, how would you get them? Obviously lymphocytes will have no granules, will be low in side scatter. Neutrophils they are also called uh, granulocytes, it will be high in site scatter. How about bone marrow? Now we have a new technique for gating called using CD45 and site scatter. CD45 is ex expressed on mature white blood cells, so if you get immature white blood cells, there will be low CD45. If you get non-white blood cells, they will have be quite negative CD45, so R four which is erythroid will be negative for cd45 r1 granulostic will be high side scatter because they are granular r2 lymphoid will be low side scatter because they are a granular monocytes will be in between now we'll talk about the second application of flow cytometry which is cell surface antigens so other applications are mainly research applications which we will not cover today. Before we talk about immunophenotyping, we need to give a background about fluorescence. Some compounds they have fluorescent properties, which mean if they get hit by laser light with appropriate wavelengths, they will emit light at certain wavelengths. We need to use fluorescent compounds in order to enable us to analyze 
the surface antigens on different cells. These are the most common fluorescent compounds, FIT, CPE, PERCP. They absorb light, as we said, at certain wavelengths and they emit light at certain wavelengths. This diagram, how can we use flow cytometry to study the immunophenotyping, the surface antigens on different cells? The cell at the entrance of the flow cytometry is a yellow cell which is bound to a green compound. Suppose this is a monocyte expressing a CD14 antigen. The white antibody is CD14 antibody which gets attached to the monocyte. The green fluorescent compound is a FITC fluorescent compound. What happens if you run this cell into the flow cytometry? The laser light will hit the cell. The fluorescent compound will transmit light and the FITC FL1 detector will detect the light so you get a dot on the FL1 parameter. And that's how you differentiate and you identify different cells uh, using flow cytometry. Um, now we will talk about how can we use flow cytometry to diagnose different leukemias and lymphomas. And we'll start by acute lymphocytic leukemia. Obviously it will be peroxidase negative because peroxidase is a myeloid marker and it will be TDT positive because TDT is an immature marker for lymphoid cells. Now, how can you subclassify ALL if the cells show positivity for CD19, CD20, or CD10? This is common BA, common ALL or pre-PALL. If they are, if they express more than two positive T cell markers, in general, CD1 to CD10 are T cell markers, CD10 to CD20 are T cell markers. So if you get more than two positive T cell markers, they are T cell ALL. The above negative and you have myeloid markers this is m0ml obviously mature bll will be tdt negative because tdt is immature marker and they will be surface immunoglobulin positive 20 to 40 percent of ll cases will be will have positive myeloid markers now we will practice some flow cytometry data on all the first slide on the top left using CD45 and site scatter. Identify 53.3% blast cells. How did I know that they are blasts? Because they are CD45 negative. So I know from the very first slide to the top left that this patient has got leukemia, more than 20% blasts in the blood, in the bone marrow, sorry. Now I want to subclassify this leukemia, whether it's acute lymphocytic leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia, whatever. I try the lymphoid marker CD10, CD19, which is the second slide to the right, are positive for both. I try the myeloid marker CD33, CD117, and it's negative for both. CD19 positive, CD20 negative, CD33 negative, 34 positive, CD33 negative, and 13 positive. This is acute lymphocytic leukemia, as the majority of markers are lymphoid markers. Now, how can I diagnose acute myeloid leukemia using flow cytometry? Typically, AML is CD13 positive, 33 positive, CD117 positive, and often CD11 positive. So M0 AML will have co-expression of myeloid and non-lineage restricted lymphoid markers. What we say by non-lineage is both the T cell and B cell markers. For example, CD2 is a T cell marker, CD7 is a T cell marker, CD4 is a T cell marker, CD19 is a P cell marker. So if you express both P cell and T cell markers plus TDT, this is M0 AML, M4 and M5, as you know, this is a monocytic component. So they will express monocytic antigens, CD64 and CD14. M6 is an erythroid AML. They will express glycophorin A positive. M7, they express CD41 positive and CD61 positive. Now, how can I diagnose, CL, diagnose CLL using flow cytometry? Obviously, you will need, according to the guidelines, lymphocytosis, persistent lymphocytosis, more than three months 
as a lymphocyte count should be over 5,000. In the past, we used to do a bone marrow biopsy and get more than 30% lymphocytes to diagnose CLL. Now, with flow cytometry, you don't need to do a bone marrow biopsy and you can diagnose CLL using a blood sample as long as it meets the criteria. Low density of surface immunoglobulin and B cell surface antigens, which are CD19, 20, 23, and CD20 dim. We classify the intensity of fluorescence to dim, bright, and very bright. Dim is one positive, bright is two positive, and very bright is three positive. Obviously, CLL should have CD5 surface antigens. Now we'll practice diagnosing CLL using flow cytometry data. The first slide to the top left shows CD19-20 positive. The second slide to the right shows CD23-19 positive. The first slide in the left bottom, CD19 positive, 5 positive. And the last slide shows that they are kappa restricted. So this is by definition CLL. How can I diagnose different lymphomas using flow cytometry? We'll talk about B cell lymphomas, CLL for chronic lymphocytic le leukemia or lymphoma, MCL for mantle cell lymphoma, MZL for marginal zone lymphoma, FL for follicular lymphoma. They are all B cell lymphomas, so they all express surface immunoglobulin CD19 and CD20. CLL and mantle cell lymphoma, they both express CD5. However, how can I differentiate between mantle cell lymphoma and CLL if they both express CD5? CD23 is positive in CLL and negative in mantle cell lymphoma, but 10% of mantle cell lymphoma cases will be positive for CD23. How can I differentiate between CLL and CD23 positive mantle cell lymphoma? And the answer is cyclin D1, which is positive only in mantle cell lymphoma and always negative in CLL. Now, follicular lymphoma is easily identified by strong positivity to CD10 and BCL6. Marginal zone lymphoma, we don't have any unique markers for marginal zone lymphoma, and it's usually diagnosis of exclusion. This paper compared flow cytometry and histopathology reports for lymph node biopsies. In this paper, they took the lymph node and cut it in half. One half sent to the flow cytometry lab and the other half was sent to the histopathology lab. And the results were analyzed and compared. And 87% of the cases showed concordance. So you could sometimes rely on flow cytometry to diagnose lymphoma, especially in emergency cases. How can we diagnose hairy cell leukemia using flow cytometry? We, the first slide to the top left shows CD45 negative population. This is the cells of interest. We get the cells and then we sub-analyze them. They are CD19 positive, 20 positive, CD11 C positive, 103 positive, CD25 positive, 103 positive, 11C positive, 19 positive, and they are LAMPA restricted, which is very characteristic for hairy cell leukemia. How can I diagnose multiple myeloma using flow cytometry? The first slide to the top left shows CD45 negative population in blue. These are the cells of interest, which I'll be getting them and then analyze them further. If we further analyze them for CD38 and CD56, they are positive for both. They are positive for CD38 and negative for lambda. They are positive for CD38 and kappa. And they are positive for CD38 and CD138, which means that they are very characteristic for multiple myeloma. In the future, maybe flow cytometry can be used in vivo without even the need of a blood sample. Thank you for your attention.